Mrs. Natishan, and also by the Prime Minister and his family. And the Secretary of State, uh, Jerry Weiner and Mrs. Weiner are here as well, and there they are. They're responsible for the celebrations today. They are, and quite a celebration planned over the next hour, hour and a half here, as I said, highlighted by the speeches uh, by the Queen, the Prime Minister, and the Governor General. The Queen speaking just the other night in Calgary, making mention of the challenging times at which the country faces. And it's expected that again today, her remarks will contain some reference to these days in the summer of 1990 in Canada. Mm -hmm. A good-sized crowd on Parliament Hill. Yeah, it's certainly, it's an overcast day. It's not the most beautiful day. People were just delighted that the rain had stopped because it was fairly heavy before this. A royal salute. personal Canadian flag, which she uh, chose or adopted in 1962. It's got the arms of Canada, it's her initial in there, and everywhere she is in Canada, whether she's on a ship or whatever building she is in, they fly the Queen's personal Canadian flag. Now the uh, troop commander of the ceremonial guard, the guard commander, Major J.C. Allard, now fighting the Queen to inspect the Guard of Honor. With the 21-gun salute still being fired in the background, as I'm sure you're well aware, we certainly are. Just a few basic facts on the ceremonial guard now to be inspected by Her Majesty. It's a composite unit formed for the purpose of mounting the guard at Government House and on Parliament Hill during the summer months. And just in the last hour, the ceremonial changing of the guard took place here, as it does every day here in Ottawa during the summer by members of the Guard. Primarily, the Guard members are drawn from the uh, Governor General's Foot Guards of Ottawa and the Canadian Grenadier Guards of Montreal. completing the uh, inspection of the ceremonial guard, and it's the ceremonial guard band playing in the background. Conversation there with the guard commander, Major Allard, finding everything in order as the queen heads back to the uh, saluting base. And no doubt this is a challenging day on this, the last day of the royal visit. Not only the celebrations here, but later today, the quick and brief visit to Hull, which has been 
of such controversy over the past few days across the river in Quebec. Now the second royal salute will be um, O Canada, the national anthem. the part of the ceremony here at the base of the centennial flame there you see in the center of your shot which is uh, directly in front of the peace tower here on parliament hill governor general now will escort the queen over to the receiving line where a number of uh, national and local dignitaries have assembled to meet the queen and you hear the crowd now starting to uh, respond and cheer that's right that's right and interestingly enough, the Queen has chosen to stop and uh, see some general members of the public uh, before heading over to the Chief Justice line, which is doing now. The new Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Canada, the Right Honorable Antonio Lemaire and uh, Mrs. Lemaire, meeting the Queen now, the uh, Chief Justice just appointed a couple of days ago to succeed the retiring Chief Justice Brian Dixon. Speaker of the Senate, the Honorable Guy Charbonneau and Mrs. Charbonneau. And John Fraser, the Speaker of the House of Commons. And Mrs. Fraser. As you may have guessed, the uh, ceremonial band is directly below us now. Uh, we won't try to compete with them as the Queen follows through on the receiving line here, meeting, as we said, a number of uh, uh, local and diplomatic corps uh, dignitaries before she uh, heads up to the main area in front of the Peace Tower for the stage show that will take place here to celebrate Canada Day. And the snowbirds later on. Snowbirds are part of the fixture of these celebrations yeah. <laughs> now on Parliament Hill. They come rocketing across uh, over the uh, Parliament Buildings area, and it's always a challenge to try and capture a glimpse of them <laughs> as they, uh, they hurtle past a couple hundred miles an hour. This time they'll be coming, though, after the Queen speaks. The Dave Barrett, yeah. the former uh, Premier of British Columbia, and, of course, the uh, NDP federal member now, runner-up in the last uh, NDP leadership convention last November to uh, Audrey McLaughlin. In fact, uh, Mr. Barrett may well be just sitting in for Ms. McLaughlin yeah, today. Yeah, he's representing the NDP. Because that was her spot in the line. Now we're into the uh, local dignitaries. That's uh, Andy Hayden, who's the chairman of the regional municipality of, of Ottawa Carleton. And Mrs. Hayden. And from there, the Queen now will head up in front of the, uh, the Parliament Buildings area after finishing through this line, the mayor of Ottawa and his wife. and uh, the celebrations which take place, which will include singing, a number of awards presented mm -hmm. uh, for Poster Day. Poster Day and new songs, very uh, songs celebrating multiculturalism, 
uh, special children who've been selected to present flowers to the Queen and the Governor General. This is obviously a day when uh, people are rewarded for good citizenship and good behavior and brought to <laughs> Ottawa. <laughs> there are a number of contests that go on through the year and, and the kids that win them get a chance to get a trip to Canada Day and come. And this is a special one. Normally, obviously, they, they might get a chance to present something to the Governor General or the Prime Minister, but, but not the Queen. And this summer uh, celebrates a couple of other anniversaries, 25th anniversary of, uh, of the Canadian flag, 10th anniversary of the, uh, uh, the latest wording of our national anthem, as you well recall, it was 10 years ago, a number of the words were changed. And this is marks 10 uh, fast years since that happened. It just seems like yesterday. Really. <laughs> I know, I still learning those words. <laughs> and also, uh, there is a new Canada Day stamp, which will be launched today as well. Well, the Queen arrives now in the uh, platform area at the stage at the, directly beneath the Peace Tower on Parliament Hill. And all various choirs from the Ottawa area and around have been assembled for this and have been practicing actually here on Parliament Hill for the last number of days. If you walk by, you get a chance to hear them sing. So we mentioned a good-sized crowd, I'd guess somewhere in the 25,000 neighborhood, 20 to 25,000 here on the hill. It gets bigger throughout this day with a giant fireworks display here on the on the hill later tonight where there's often upwards of 100,000 people gathered for that display. But this particular event, the Daytime Canada event, has drawn rather small crowds these last couple of The Royal Anthem played by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police Band, sung by the cantata singers of Ottawa and the Ottawa Choral Society. Now the Secretary of State will actually begin the program here today and will act as the host for the next hour or so. His name, Jerry Weiner. He will introduce the program, and that's him standing now, getting out of his chair and heading over to the podium area. So an occasion will pop in if... Uh, some names are needed to help guide you through the next hour. Jerry Weiner. Your Majesty, Your Excellencies, Prime Minister and Mrs. Mulroney, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Mesdames et Messieurs, as we come together in 1990, to celebrate Canada's 123rd birthday, the 25th anniversary of Canada's national flag, the 10th anniversary of our national anthem, the United Nations declared International Year of Literacy, we may reflect on the remarkable strides we have taken as a nation in a relatively short period of time and of the great challenges that lie ahead in our future. This year, we have particular cause to reflect on the heritage that is ours. We are proud to be honored by the presence of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, head of our constitutional monarchy, the cornerstone of our political system. J'aimerais maintenant vous présenter le père Paul-André de Rocher qui lira deux prières en l'honneur de la fête du Canada. In honor 
of the 123rd anniversary of Canada. On this Canada Day 1990, we bring our prayer to you, Creator and Protector. We have much to be thankful for. Our vast country, one of nature's great treasure troves, and the beautiful array of people you have assembled from all parts of the world to be the Canadian family. You have given us many splendid challenges and we are still learning how to better meet them. We must be knowledgeable stewards of our environment for our own good and that of our planet. We must set aside prejudice and appreciate the richness of diversity of our country. And we must, in this generation, do what is needed to strengthen the magnificent nation begun by the illustrious men and women of our past. We pray for generosity, both of heart and of purse, extending not only to all our fellow Canadians, but also to all the world's people. May universal peace, which has taken hold in a more evident fashion during this last year, continue to grow, and may we always be its allies. We make our prayer to you in faith and trust. Amen. Dieu éternel et créateur, God, eternal God and Creator, we offer our prayers in our national anniversary. First and foremost, for most we thank you for all the good things which you have given to us all Canadians. We are, we recognize the peace which has spread throughout the world. However, we have failed in protecting our planet Earth. Send us wisdom. Make us more aware of all the peoples on Earth, of the environment, to others. The beginning of the last decade of the 20th century, may divine grace help us to greater conviviality and to a society which will eliminate poverty and to make us extremely generous to all needs and requirements of all people of the earth. Eternal God, we pray to you, we glorify and sanctify you, now and forever. Amen.
comme je l'ai mentionné il y a quelques minutes, as I said a few minutes ago, 1990 marks the 25th anniversary of our national flag. Notre concours d'affiche de la fête du Canada a mis en relief our track record and our whole agenda has highlighted this and I'm extremely pleased to tell you that some 7,000 youngsters from the four corners of the country have participated. This poster challenge not only reflects the tremendous enthusiasm by young people for Canada, but is a truly unique example of corporate sponsors and government working together for the benefit of our youth. This year, for the first time, we are pleased to welcome all 12 provincial territorial winners to this ceremony through the gracious sponsorship of Canadian Airlines International and the Chateau Laurier Hotel. I am delighted to welcome Mr. Peter Wallace, Vice President, Government and Regulatory Affairs, Canadian Airlines International, and Mr. Peter Howard, General Manager of the Chateau Laurier Hotel, and would ask them to please rise. I would ask now our provincial territorial winners to please stand. The national winner of this year's contest is 13-year-old Susie Coyne from Greenfield Park, Quebec. Many of you will have seen Susie's colorful poster displayed in your community schools and centers. In describing her work, Susie said, the children represent the many cultures in Canada united as one. The rainbow shows that Canada Day is a happy day for all Canadians. Truly, it is the youth of our country who provide us with the hope and inspiration for the future. Mesdames et Messieurs, veuillez nous joindre à moi et accueillir to welcome here on stage the winner of the Anniversary of Canada poster 1990, Miss Susie Coyne, who shall receive from Her Majesty the Queen a frame, framed picture of her car. And a big day for 13-year-old Susie Coyne as she talks with Her Majesty now after winning the Canada Day poster contest. But she gets a framed copy to take home for herself. <laughs> and she's brought her two brothers along and her mom is uh, from the Philippines originally. Uh, she's a great artist and interested in art. These things uh, were all on display in Ottawa for the past week for people to see. It is now my pleasure to introduce the national winner of the Multiculturalism Together We're Better contest, which challenged young Canadians to promote racial harmony by organizing a group activity or in-class discussion, by writing a poem, story, essay, or song, 
by submitting a photo or drawing. Mary Jane Viejo, age de 18 ans, et étudiant à Toronto, student at university, won first prize with her beautiful song, Reach for the Sky. The message is clear in her song. Working together, we make of Canada a place where it is good to live in. Well, please welcome Mary Jane Viejo, who shall interpret her song, Reach for the Sky. something. Uh, her father's in real estate. She passed the real estate courses last summer, but she was too young to receive them yet. She wants to be a lawyer or a musician or have her own business. The Queen applauding and Jerry Weiner now. For the past several years, we have been, we have fortunate, been fortunate to have a number of choirs take part in this celebration. The Ottawa Regional Youth Choir, the Central Choirs, of the Ottawa Board of Education, the Ottawa Choral Society, and the Castanshell Choir, all joined together 
under the excellent leadership of music director Maestro Brian Law to give voice to our feelings of happiness on this special day. The choir is joined for the first time this year by the RCMP Concert Band and their director, Inspector Charlie Hendricks. This year, we are also honored to have with us a very special Canadian, Mr. Kevin McMillan, whose magnificent voice has made him a worthy ambassador of Canada on stages around the world. Mr. McMillan now joins the band and choir to perform Howard Cable's Sing Sea to Sea.
Earlier this year, we celebrated the 25th anniversary of our distinctive Maple Leaf flag. To mark this event, Canada Post Corporation has struck a special commemorative stamp which has been sponsored by the Canadian Chamber of Commerce. I would now invite Mr. Donald Lander, President and Chief Executive Officer of Canada Post Corporation, and Mr. Rolf Hogan, Chairman of the Canadian Chamber of Commerce, to join Her Majesty on the stage for the unveiling of the stamp. Well, that uh, little bit of action was to officially unveil a new stamp here for today, the special commemorative 1990 Canada Day stamp. They're giving her uh, some new coins this afternoon, too. Dora de Petteri Hunt has uh, updated the effigy on the coins, and that presentation will be made at Rideau Hall later. Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency, the Right Honorable Raymond John Natitian, Governor General of Canada. Mesdames et Messieurs, Son Excellence, le très honorable Raymond His John right Natitian, Honorable Governor General Raymond du Canada. John Natitian, Governor General of Canada. Uh, Mr. Chairman, your Majesty, Monsieur le Premier Ministre, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow Canadians, cher compatriotes. We are gathered here today to celebrate the birthday of a dream. 123 years ago, the people who lived in a small group of colonies came together to form a nation. The Canada born that day was very different from the one in which we now live. The provinces of the new confederation extended only from the eastern side of the Straits of Northumberland to the western border of the newly named province of Ontario. But even that small nation, with a population of, more than, of little more than three million people, was a miracle. For many years, a miracle that had seemed unlikely. This country, was not founded in the fiery forge of war. It was the result of complex and sometimes painful negotiations, which were successful only after initial failure. In time, Canada grew from sea to sea. In the words of our national motto, Ameria Utsqua Ad Mare, because people worked together to gain understanding of their different views and then found solutions agreeable to all. Même dans les périodes les plus sombres, il y a toujours eu des hommes et des femmes. There were always de men and women from all political stripes and from all areas of the country who, through their belief de rêve, and their dreams, have ensured the existence of Canada. Il est facile d'apprécier la mondialité 
it is easy to understand the vastness and the beauty of our country. But Canada is more than just a landscape. What is its true importance is the importance and the value of all Canadians who share it with us from all cultures who have hopes and aspirations, concerns, and who have different requirements. Today, Canada Day, we have every reason to remain optimistic as an individual and as a people. We have, and we are, a country made up of people who are willing to take risks together to live in peace in the world and full of faith in, in the future. This has enabled Canadians to exercise at the international level a great intelligence and understanding which we were in demonstrates the vastness of Canada. When what was then Canada rejected slavery in a world where most people saw nothing intrinsically immoral about owning other human beings. Internationally, modern-day Canada was among the first signatories to the United Nations Charter, and since the very earliest day of that organization, we have strengthened it with our presence and support. On an individual basis, we have been trailblazers in every major field. For the past 70 years, there have been people around the world who lived thanks to the discovery of insulin by Canadians. We have made major contributions to heart surgery and to the treatment of heart disease, to the neurosciences, and to the understanding of cystic fibrosis. Canadians developed petroleum refining, basketball, standard time, and the modern postage stamp. We have contributed to computer and space exploration technology and to the software that activates today's vital advanced communications devices. Can Canada's artists and teachers in every field, writing, philosophy, sports, the visual arts as well as the performing arts, have challenged the world, enchanted it, and helped give it a soul in two of the world's great languages. Nous ne devrions pas être surpris de nos réalisations. We should not be surprised of our individual and collective successes. We must not also be discouraged by the challenges which confront us today. We have always seen Canada as an audacious experience which has compelled us to undertake efforts to understand each other, to respect each other. That is the Canada which the Fathers of Confederation made for us. It is the Canada that we shall leave to our children. And today, in the company of the Queen of Canada, with the symbols of our nationhood everywhere around us, our parliament buildings, our flag, in the capital of our country, where Canadians of every origin live and work together. And as we do, we must remember that caring about Canada is not a once-a-year exercise. It is a willingness to live up to our responsibilities as citizens every day of every year to build the Canada we want, the Canada envisioned for us all those years ago. Thank you, and God bless Canada. Merci beaucoup. Depuis 1984, since 1984, the whole variety of folklore and culture has promoted the Quebec folklore. In Quebec music, the jigs, arts, and popular 
traditions by participating in regional events as well as international events this group has drawn many fans whether it be a, through its excellent on-stage performance or by its vitality let us welcome from Saint Marie de Beauce, Saint -Marie de Beauce a very talented group of musicians and dancers, the Maligans Folklore Group. seem to get the crowd going here on Parliament Hill in Ottawa, Canada Day celebrations, 1990. The Secretary of State, Mr. Weiner, now will be uh, asking for the Prime Minister to make some remarks. We heard from the Governor General a short reference to these uh, times that we live in, the summer of 1990, and the challenges that uh, confront Canadians. The Prime Minister's remarks will be watched closely, as will the Queen's 
when she uh, talks to this crowd here in a few moments time. Majesty, Excellencies, Monsieur le Juge en Chef, chers collègues et chers amis, Canada is 123 years old today, and we are honored and proud that on this important date in our history, Her Majesty the Queen of Canada is among us. If the crown represents continuity and strength, and it does, then your majesty has come to symbolize grace and wisdom. Your majesty's selfless commitment to the cause of Canada's unity and your deep personal understanding of both our promise and our problems explains why your majesty is held in such admiration and affection by so many millions of Canadians. Your Majesty, on behalf of all Canadians, I wish you a warm and an affectionate welcome to Canada. Together we are celebrating the anniversary of the political birth of our country. In the intervening 123 years, Canada has grown immensely and has prospered greatly and has earned the respect of peoples throughout the world. Canada has done so for many reasons, but above all, I believe, because men and women of different origins and languages and cultures found in their hearts the determination and generosity of spirit to work together to build a genuinely pluralistic country where all Canadians could fulfill their individual dreams. Our evolution as a nation has not been untroubled and our unity has occasionally been challenged. And so it is today. All Canadians must work resolutely at maintaining the unity and prosperity of one of the world's great nations, and I can tell you, Your Majesty, that we shall, and that we shall succeed. Le Canada, in a way, Canada already existed thousands of years ago when native parents taught their children a respect for nature and the importance of honesty and courage. Canada also existed when a handful of French settler settlers chose to brave isolation in a hostile wilderness. And later, when the British, eventually followed by people from around the world, came here and joined together in achieving the common goal of liberty, justice, and prosperity. And Canada will continue to exist as long as men and women with different linguistic, religious, cultural, and racial backgrounds reach out to each other and with characteristic pride and mutual respect, strive to develop the bonds that unite them. And as young as the newborn child of an immigrant family that arrived at Pearson International earlier this week. And Canada remains a country of truly extraordinary possibility. Your presence among us today, Your Majesty, does us all great honor and brings us much encouragement because it helps all Canadians appreciate the splendid richness of our inheritance and rejoice in our diversity and in our common love of Canada. Thank you and God bless you all. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Mesdames et Messieurs, Sa Majesté la Reine Elizabeth II. A national day is an occasion which usually arises emotions of thanksgiving, a sense of history, and a sense of continuity. All of those things are present today, but there is also a sense of anxiety about Canada's future. On this day, 123 years ago, a new nation was born. The British North America Act came into force as the nation's basic constitutional law, and its opening words refer to the desire of the provinces to be federally united. It is that united Canada which I first visited in 1951 of which I became Queen in 1952 and which I have got to know so well. It is that Canada which I trust I shall see in future years when I come again. just a fair-weather friend, and I am glad to be here at this sensitive time. I hope my presence may call to mind those many years of shared experience and raise new hopes for the future. The unity of the Canadian people was the paramount issue in 1867 as it is today. There is no force except the force of will to keep Canadians together. <clears throat> Tous les nouveaux arrivés sont entrés dans une famille the newcomers joined a Canadian family, which began with Canada's Aboriginal peoples, who came first and whose rights have been acknowledged by successive governments, that all have been able to live together in peace and harmony and to achieve their aspirations in a single constitutional framework says much for the Canadian way of doing things. It says much for the values of tolerance and pluralism, by no means unique to Canada and Canadians, but much admired in this country and by its people. There is in Canada, and about Canadians, a constant search for fairness, a receptiveness to honourable accommodation, enabling the two principal language communities to flourish within the Canadian family. Those values are needed now more than ever. Beyond the celebration of today lies the challenge of tomorrow. The unity of the Canadian people and their will to live together will be tested in the months ahead. Our ceremony here today brings together sovereign, 
Parliament and people, the three parts of constitutional monarchy. That is a system in which those who represent the community come together to reconcile conflicting interests. It is a system that has worked well for a long time. It is my fondest wish for this Canada Day that Canadians come together and remain together rather than dwelling on differences which might further divide them. Canada Day sees the start of the season of family holidays and summer pleasures. That is perhaps a useful thing. Knowing Canadians as well as I do, I cannot believe that they will not be able, after a period of calm reflection, to find a way through the present difficulties. members of my family have been with you on many special days in the life of this country. I particularly recall another 1st of July in Canada's centennial year here on Parliament Hill. I said then, and I repeat it today, that Canada is a country that has been blessed beyond most countries in the world. It is a country worth working for. May, may God bless Canada and may God bless and keep you all. While the Queen describing this as a sensitive time in the country's history, calling for a period of calm reflection and wishing that uh, Canadians come together, remain together, rather than dwelling on the differences which might further divide them. Telling the crowd here that has uh, surged in size over the last hour, there's at least 25 or 30,000 people here, describing Canada as a country worth working for. The national anthem will be sung. Canada in the background and the second 21-gun salute of the past hour, testing the windows here in the uh, Parliament Hill region of Ottawa. We're expecting the fly past any moment oh, now. And here it comes, the snowbirds flying over Parliament Hill. Canadian Armed Forces, aerobatic team, Tudor aircraft. There are still a couple of miles well, not even that, really, from uh, Parliament Hill, but they're... Uh... That's not always time. They're usually they're earlier on in the show. <laughs> <laughs> you almost miss them because they come by so quickly. Now, the crowd here isn't, uh, isn't aware oh, of this here. yet. I think they see them now. They're starting to cheer. Yeah. They're right over. is quite a quite a sight the precision 
work of the Canadian Armed Forces, uh, we remember all too well the difficulties of last year for the snowbirds and the accident in Toronto. But they are back again for another summer and uh, fall of Aerobatic activity shows. across the country. The formal ceremony on the stage is finished, so the Queen will be heading back down toward the Centennial Flame. And this is the, uh, the opportunity that's marked on her schedule to, uh, to meet members of the general public who have come out here today for the national celebration on Parliament Hill. Uh, it is worth noting that in all three speeches we heard from the Governor General, the Prime Minister, and from the Queen, and uh, specifically and in, in the, the prayers. <laughs> Even if you noticed in the, in the right. prayers today, all references to troubled times, sensitive times, calmness, reflection, and what is worth holding on to and what is important and significant to remember. All stress that. Looks like the snowbirds are coming back for another pass here. Starting to kick in the, uh, the colors as well in their... Uh, exhaust fumes. Yeah. <laughs> there they call you. <laughs> With the red dye behind them right over the peace tower. Right above the Queen's standard on the peace tower. The Governor General and his wife are hosting a reception at Rideau Hall this afternoon for the Queen. 700 people have a chance to meet the Queen there this afternoon, and then they have tea with the Neticians. Before that, the Queen will be having lunch with the Prime Minister and his wife at 24 Sussex, and then head over to Hull, Quebec, for the uh, ceremonies at uh, Jacques Cartier Park. And she leaves Ottawa and heads back to England uh, this afternoon, or later this evening, I mean. Much has been said uh, all week about the visit across the river to Hull. Uh, a number of the local dignitaries in Hull, including the mayor, not willing to take part in that. It is a uh, very brief visit taking place there. Uh, but the Queen has chosen to go ahead with the visit, of course, uh, concern on the part of uh, some Quebecers about the Queen's visit, especially in light of the uh, action of the Beach Lake Accord. But last time she was here, she was the last visit, uh, last place she was in Canada was in Quebec City, when she uh, visited the National Assembly there, talking to um, the Poster Day winner there, singing the song for Canada. This is the uh, 15th visit of the Queen in her 38th year reign. So she's come to Canada about every other year. This is still a sort of official area in front of the stage. You saw the Queen once again uh, shaking hands with uh, some of the winners who are announced on the stage today, the uh, different participants in the different contests, the poster contest, the uh, stamp contest. Practicing their curtsy, which of course half the time goes right out of your head if you're you know, face to face with that face that has looked at you from coins and stamps your entire life. they sing every year here on Canada Day. This has been one of the, uh, the faster trips, the shortest trips, I guess the right word to use here, for the, uh, for the Queen on her visits to Canada. Usually lasts a little longer than this, just arriving in Calgary midweek last Wednesday and uh, leaving to go back to England tonight. Uh, there is no doubt the uh, trip when originally planned, uh, had a, a different spin, if you wish, attached to it in terms of the expectation on the part of uh, federal officials that part of the royal visit would be uh, to acknowledge the passing of Meech Lake. Obviously, the accord uh, didn't pass, mm -hmm. and uh, it, the visit has taken on a different light because they, of that. They also had uh, increased the budget for the Canada Day ceremonies in the last federal budget. It was one of the areas of increase and again likely because the government wished to, to make it more of a celebration following the 23rd of June. Well one of the things they uh, that was certainly different about this Canada Day ceremony than, than any I can remember in the past was the acknowledgement of private companies by uh, the Secretary of State in his speech uh, earlier on for helping fly in some participants here. That's, that's something uh, that I've never heard before and uh, perhaps it signals uh, 
a new era in the sense of... Privatizing Canada Day. We are also remembering that two years ago, a newly elected Lucien Bouchard was in fact the Secretary of State and the person responsible for the Canada Day ceremonies. Well, the Queen, as uh, often happens on these little walkabouts, is getting uh, past many flowers. And you will see at some point she will delicately uh, pass them uh, behind her to her aide de camp. Uh, at a certain point, there are just too many uh, for her to hold on to. But she heads down that uh, famous center path in front of the uh, Peace Tower that leads down to the Centennial Flame on its way to uh, Wellington Street here in downtown Ottawa. And certainly a, a terrific response of the crowd to her. I mean, we didn't hear the, the cheers go through the crowd even when the Prime Minister and the Governor General arrived or spoke. But certainly when she said in her speech, each about the United Canada, and it's that Canada which I trust I shall see in future years when I come again. A great cheer came up from the crowd and applause for that. A group of girl guides who have gathered here and got a good little spot. The Queen will be involved in all kinds of uh, ceremonies and activities in England this summer. 90th birthday of her mother this summer. This summer 90. The Queen Mother, of course, was born in 1900, so I think this August she'll be celebrating her 90th birthday. So the celebrations to mark that have already begun. All right, well, down in that crowd back there where the little girl guides were, there's our uh, Wendy Mesley, who can get a reaction from the crowd and uh, on their meeting of the Queen, Wendy. Thank you, Peter. I'm here with Jessica. Hi. And Samantha. Hi. Did you get a good uh, glance at the Queen? Yeah, I did. What did she look like? She was pretty and <laughs> she's just, she's really nice. What did you think? She doesn't look like her age. I think she looks a lot prettier than she seems. Well, do you know how old she is? 64. 64? She's pretty famous for her hats. What did you think of the one she was wearing today? Yeah, she is. Did you like today's hat? Yeah. <laughs> you were here for a long time. Was it worth it? I guess so, yes. I saw all of you, all of the girl guides here staring up at the sky. You seem pretty excited by the snowbirds. Was that as good as the Queen, Jessica? Um, I think the Queen was better. Why? Well, because she's, fam she's more famous than the snowbirds, and it's really an honor to get to see her. What did you think? What did you like better? I think the Queen, because it's not all the time that you get to see the Queen. The Prime Minister walked by with her too. Did uh, Was that exciting? Well, I've seen him before, so no, really. <laughs> Thank you very much, both of you. Have fun on Canada Day. Happy birthday, Canada. Back to you, Peter. All right, well, some pretty uh, honest the reflections there. <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes. The Queen's now in an area where there's more contest winners. Where she'll be presenting some awards for uh, the winners of some national literacy contests. As, as was pointed out at the beginning of the ceremony, among the many things they're celebrating this year, including the anniversary of the flag and the anthem, is the fact that it's uh, International Literacy Year. And they're certainly trying to raise awareness, and uh, Mrs. Mulroney has been involved in that as well. Well, listening to the choir in the background as the Landau arrives here in front of Parliament Hill, it's been a quick walkabout. Let's listen to this for a moment. Queen arrived by limousine, but she will be uh, departing under uh, sunny skies now uh, in the historic Landau, which is used here on occasions of state. The Governor General has used it in the past for uh, arriving on Parliament Hill for the reading of the speech from the throne. She's heading off to uh, 24 Sussex Drive for lunch with the Mulroonies, with the mounted escort of the RCMP. And the carol on in the background. I think it's been going for a while. It actually seemed to be playing when the Queen was speaking. 
I'm not sure whether that was planned or not. It seemed to stop in an awful hurry when she began, <laughs> when she began speaking. But the uh, Queen now just in conversation with the, uh, the Prime Minister and the Governor General and the, uh, Thanking the Secretary, Secretary of State. State. And Judy Wiener. And it was a uh, quick, a quick walkabout, as they all have been on this trip. Uh, that one taking uh, not more than 10 minutes or so. And you know, in relative terms, given uh, past times that the Queen has visited the country, the walkabouts often take uh, much longer than that. Mm -hmm. Cheer going out from the crowd. The lady-in-waiting sits in beside an equerry, accompanying the Queen in the Landau. And of course, the Queen's uh, love for horses is well known around the world. She is, uh, spends a great deal of time with the, uh, the horses at the royal stables and uh, loves to watch races. Mm -hmm. uh, but this year won't be staying for the Queen's Plate, which is uh, just a week away now, mm -hmm. a week from today, actually, in Toronto. Mm -hmm. uh, the Queen Mother, who celebrates her 90th birthday this summer, uh, has been uh, to the Queen's Plate a number of times. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure uh, with the Queen's famous love for uh, horses, she'll be uh, enjoying this ride down <laughs> yeah, 24 exactly. Sussex. So. And of course, you know, what her most famous horse, Burmese, was given to her by the Canadians. That was the one she rode for years in the Trooping of the Colour ceremony. And after Bernie, Burmese uh, could no longer do it, then um, she switched to riding in a carriage. Some of the horses aren't behaving quite as <laughs> Well, it's rare that we get a chance to see this, uh, this bit of pomp and pageantry on the hill. Of course, the Queen's visits are not, uh, are not often, but even the, uh, on the occasion of bringing out the, uh, the Landau and the, uh, the mounted procession leaving Parliament Hill, we don't get to see this too often. I think the last time was uh, the speech from the throne, the uh, swearing-in of the new Governor-General earlier this year. And it's all lined, the crowds all the way now, down Wellington and Sussex, so yeah. they can get, catch a glimpse. This is now, a this wonderful is, uh, opportunity. This is a much bigger turnout than we've witnessed here in a number of years. Uh, just guessing, at least the last 10 years, uh, I haven't seen a crowd this big on, here on July 1st. And I'm sure uh, the sight of the Queen is, is being a part of the reason why so many have turned out today. Because, quite frankly, the weather wasn't that promising earlier in the day. But the last few years, the crowds for the morning mm -hmm. celebration have been in the sort of 10 to 15,000 neighborhood. And just guessing is all I can do at this point. No estimates have been put out. But when you look at the uh, what we call the wide shot of Parliament Hill and you sense how many are in those front lawns and surrounding areas, it would be uh, inching up there, gradually getting bigger almost by the minute, anywhere in the 25 to 35,000 range. They'll expect anywhere up to 100,000 here tonight for the, for the fireworks display and the uh, concert that takes place on Parliament Hill. Yeah, I should mention actually that that uh, will be seen on the CBC, 10 o'clock in the Maritimes, 10.30 in Newfoundland, and 9 o'clock in the rest of Canada, the annual fireworks and variety show from Parliament Hill. Well, the Landau taking a procession right round uh, Parliament Hill, going up now directly in front of the uh, Peace Tower, an opportunity uh, now for many more of those who come to the hill today to uh, catch a glimpse of the Queen. The uh, motorcades directly behind us have filled up with, uh, with the Prime Minister and the Governor General's party as they head off as well. Prime Minister has to uh, zip back to 24 Sussex to be there in a few minutes' time to welcome the, uh, the Queen for lunch. And then prepare for the uh, visit to Hull, Quebec in Jacques Cartier Park. And then, as I mentioned, 700 people I get to go to Rideau Hall this afternoon. I'm sure they're home getting their hats and gloves ready <laughs> for that reception and then tea with uh, the Governor General and his wife. And also, as we mentioned earlier, also the presentation of the new Canadian coins from the Mint. As you know, they updated the image of the Queen on the British coins. They, they aged her, and um, Dora de Petteri Hunt, the sculptor, has done a new effigy of the Queen for the Canadian coins, and they'll be presented this afternoon. Well, just briefly to recap then on the, on the speeches, because uh, you will be seeing a number of those remarks later on in the day on your, 
different newscasts. You'll be hearing about them and you'll be reading about them in the papers tomorrow. But the Queen uh, referring almost in every, in almost every paragraph of her speech uh, to the situation in the country here in the summer of 1990, talking about what she has sensed, a sense of anxiety here in, in the country about Canada's future. She described this as a sensitive time. She also said it was an interesting line, there is no force except the force of will to keep Canadians together. She talked about the values of fairness and accommodation between the two principal language communities, that those values are needed now more than ever. She talked about her fondest wish for this Canada Day being that Canadians come together and remain together rather than dwelling on differences which might further divide them. Mm -hmm. And she called, as, as many others uh, have recently on, uh, on all sides of the Meech Lake debate, uh, to try and signal a summer where we... Uh, a summer of calm reflection. And actually, uh, you could, you, it, it appeared that the Prime Minister and his wife were leading the applause after she'd said a well, period of... Say, uh, people on all sides of this debate have been calling for that in the last week or so. And her last comments talked about Canada being a country worth working for. Mm -hmm. And quoting again from what she had said when she was here on Parliament Hill in 1967 on Canada Day, that Canada is a country that has been blessed beyond most countries in the world. Well, the procession comes back now to the point after doing a full circle around Parliament Hill, to the point at which it started and becomes the point of departure now as well as it heads off the Parliament Hill area to uh, a huge throng of, yeah. of those who've gathered here on the hill and uh, she's going to see many more now lining the route along the way to 24 Sussex Drive. People waving the Canadian flags that were being actually handed out. They were free if you were coming up on Parliament Hill early this morning. People were handing out words to the national anthem and the uh, God Save the Queen and handing out little Canadian flags. <laughs> well, it turns now onto uh, Wellington Street, usually crowded with buses and cars here in the nation's capital. Of course, closed off uh, to only those as, that are part of this uh, cavalcade as it heads down towards 24 Sussex Drive. Let's. Uh, Quickly, as we uh, the Queen leaves Parliament Hill, head back down to the uh, to the crowd area where Wendy Mess is standing by. Wendy, thank you, Peter. We have quite a collection of people that turned out today. A lot of families, uh, some monarchists, uh, and also we have Rob Coleman, who's here from Saskatoon. He says he's not a monarchist, but you came out anyway. Why? Well, I actually I I do support the monarchy, and I think it's a good institution they have in Canada. And I think the Queen brings a message that uh, is really good for Canada. This today trying to bring everybody together. I, I think that's a message that we all need to hear for the summer. What did you think of the speech that she gave today? She said that uh, she wasn't just a fair weather friend and uh, talked about Canadian unity a fair much. What did, what did you think? Well, I think that's important to, to show that uh, as head of state that she is caring about Canada and she cares deeply and that she has uh, a stake in, in what happens in our country and she wants to see Canada stay together. And, and I think we should all support her for that and rally behind the Queen. You moved to Quebec from Saskatoon about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. She's going over to the other side of the river this afternoon. The, the mayor of Hull has said that she's not particularly welcome at this time of the year. What do you think of that? I think, I think that uh, the, the Queen, as the head of state, should be welcome anywhere in Canada and, and that as our head of state we should support her. And the problems that there might be in Canada, they're not any of her, her she didn't cause them, so she shouldn't be blamed for them. The last time that she spoke out here in 1987, she talked about Quebec as being a distinct society. We didn't hear any of that today. I guess it's time for her to stay above the politics of it. Uh, well, as head of state, she has to. She's. Uh, she can't get into the politics, and, and I commend her for that. I think that she should remain above partisan politics and and just try to mold us together in other ways. Rob well, Coleman, thank you very much. Happy thank Canada you, Day. Safe. Thanks a lot. Back to you, Peter. All right, Wendy, thank you. And the Queen now has left Parliament Hill. Uh, many of the uh, people will be 
staying here on Parliament Hill for a lot of the day as the celebrations continue here and uh, Valerie talked about the fireworks display a little later on but uh, we figure some around 30,000 even more mm -hmm. are here now already. Valerie, which, is, which is I guess a reflection of the, of the Queen being here and a sense that I think many people are as was referred to feeling a sense of anxiety if they're looking for symbols or reasons or something to hang on to you know I think watching today and participating today um, was very important to them. And, and hearing from the Queen, uh, I'm not a fair weather friend. I mean, I don't, I don't think ease, those words change things easily, obviously, but it's time that people are being soothed and, and there is a great deal of gentleness <laughs> in terms of how to address the problems and, and where we go. All right, well, as we said at the beginning of the show, uh, many Canadians from coast to coast to coast will be making their decisions about how they want to uh, take part in this day and how to market. And we hope that uh, when you make that decision, uh, you enjoy the rest of the day uh, as well. As we mentioned earlier, tonight at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, we'll have coverage of the uh, celebrations that take place here on Parliament Hill. At 2.30 Eastern Time, just coming up a little less than two hours from now, on the CBC All News Network News World, coverage of the Queen's visit across the river here in Hull, a trip that has uh, caused some controversy over these past few days. Well, that wraps up our coverage here of the national celebration on Parliament Hill. The Queen is off now to 24 Sussex, a reception later at Government House. She leaves for England later tonight. We hope you've enjoyed our coverage and watch our supper time programs and the National and Journal, or the National <laughs> Sunday Report tonight at 10 o'clock, uh, 10.30 okay. in Newfoundland. Thanks for joining us today. Happy uh, Canada Day. Day. That concludes these Canada Day festivities with Queen Elizabeth II in Ottawa. Here is a reminder to join us later this morning for a live viewer call-in program with Democratic Congressman Byron Dorgan of North Dakota. He will join us to talk about ongoing budget negotiations between Congress and the White House. That's this morning at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, 5 a.m. on the West Coast. Coming up next, it's a conversation with the Japanese ambassador to the United States. Good morning from the nation's capital. You're watching C-SPAN, and we're pausing a moment now to update our program schedule for the next few hours. First, though, we have a reminder to join us Wednesday for a special 20th anniversary look at the service career of Supreme Court Justice Harry Blackman. That's Wednesday, beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. on the West Coast. Now, looking at this morning's programming, Coming up in a few moments, it's a conversation with the Japanese ambassador to the United States. He joined us recently to talk about trade relations between the United States and Japan, as well as political and social ties between our two countries. Then at 6.55 a.m. Eastern Time, 3.55 a.m. Pacific Time, we will bring you this week's segment of Book Notes, and our guest is Chris Ogden, author of Maggie, An Intimate Portrait of a Woman in Power. Ogden talks about this new book in which he traces the life of Britain's Prime Minister from childhood to her present role in the British government. At 8 a.m. Eastern Time, 5 a.m. on the West Coast, we invite you to take part in a live call-in program with our guest, Democratic Congressman Byron Dorgan of North Dakota. He will join us to discuss the ongoing budget talks between Capitol Hill and the White House. Finally, at 8.45 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.45 a.m. Pacific Time, we will bring you a second live call-in program with Alan Murray of the Wall Street Journal as our guest. He will join us to talk about trade between the United States and Japan. And that's our program schedule for the next few hours. We thank you for watching C-SPAN. vantage point of your neighborhood, the nation, or the international community. C-SPAN takes you to where your own perspective lies, giving you insight into the important news of the day. For public affairs television that expands your vision of the world, turn to C-SPAN, open to the public.
Coming up next, a conversation with the Japanese ambassador to the United States. He joined us to talk about U.S.-Japanese trade relations as well as political and social differences between